Welcome back from that short break. While you are calling X International and the conveyor of the legend, Lagos legend, is still right in the studio with me. And Akim Busari, our own very Akim Busari, is still right in here. And the talk goes on 61 years after what has sport development been, what has been our achievement, what has been the high point, what has been the low point. One of the strong high points when you talk about sports in Nigeria has been football. It has brought so many smiles. It has risen people from obscurity to prosperity. It has taken the poor to the higher level they desire. Football is an opium for development. Why mm. is where I'll come to. Um, a lot of people might not really know. Like I was telling one young man, you need to go back to history lane and find out what certain people have contributed right. to motivate others to grow. And mm. you're one of them. That's right. the simple truth. Sure. Because the, the, the set of players we played with mm -hmm. showed the light outside the world. They represented yes. Nigeria. They started moving outside the world. Yes. That was how the Exodus moved in. Yes. Football as an opium. The youth of today, of tomorrow, Football is the only instrument, sport-wise, you can right. get them to go into. The question now is, why do we pay lip service to football as a sport? Because people will tell you football, 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 but the right structures are not there. Basically, you know, uh, you know, we've lost some things when it comes to putting the structures, especially for youth development in Nigeria. I mean, what do I mean by that? Back in those days, you know, before you leave your neighborhood, people know who you are. They know your name. They know what you can do when it comes to football. But nowadays, that is no more. Younger guys don't even have an identity when it comes to which area you're from. I can, I can give you an example. I'll give you names. I remember back, I mean, like early, early let me be early 80s. We used to, we, I was born in Sudan here. And then there were tournaments that different clubs would come and play. I'm just trying to let, let you know how the youths are not being looked after to, to actually showcase their talent nowadays. Erin Russo was brought in during the tournament we were playing, and we didn't even know who he was. But then the crowd that followed him can tell you, will tell you that, oh, this guy must be talented. So what, what that means is that you develop your trade from your neighborhood, people know who you are, and then you carry your trade to the next level. Nowadays, it's even difficult to find I mean, I don't want to go into age sheets and all kind of stuff, right? You're 17, you're 18, you're 19. You should be playing premiership team in Nigeria. Back in those days, we played when we were in schools, high schools. Played for NEPA when I was in school. Played for a lot of people played when I was in school. But nowadays, you don't get to see any of those happen. You play for national team. I mean, Nigeria national team, age of 20, 21. And you can go back and check it. So, but where are those things nowadays? There are no more. So that means we need to go back. I mean, go back to do the basics. Basics. Very if you can do the basics, then these things will fall back to normal. Some guys are doing it, and that's by way of you know setting up academies. But then, do they have the right tool to work with? That's, you, that, that, that's where you have FAs, you know, making things hard for them. It shouldn't be. When you have an academy, you should get things for free. You should, you should be supported. Anyhow, government support, FA support, uh, you know, because you're developing young ones. But nowadays, you know, they charge you for this, charge you for that, and then, you know, they in, in that way, they run you out of business. Exactly. And that's, that's, that's what's also a problem for Nigeria. I, I, I absolutely want to agree with you before I go to Akim. Uh, fine, he's an elderly person to me. We right. all grew up. Mm -hmm. He's somebody who looked after us when we were growing up. But there was something synonymous about my very person. He knows. They will say, don't allow him to take that shot. <laughs> so anywhere we go to, yeah. they know one, one good shot is a goal. That's so it. So you're synonymous with such feature. And for mm. him, he's this kind of a midfielder who will hack you down anyhow you want to go to. So True. that special future, people don't want to see it in most of these young ones. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to become a superstar, which is wrong. Uh, Akim, let me come back to you. Still within the opium, what else can we use football for? Uh, well, uh, we know football is massive. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the biggest tools, it's one of the biggest in the world to emancipate people, to empower people. Um, that is what the politicians have been using to get us grounded. <laughs> because you know we love football. Like uh, Wiley said, early in those days, you must be known for something. Yeah. Say that you're a tennis player, say that you're a boxer, say that you're an athlete who, who run faster than uh, us in boats, or you're one of the best footballers. You must be known for something. But these days, like you also said, everything is practically dead because we don't have people with passion, genuine passion for the game. That's the problem. Passion. Now, 
Uh, the development of Nigerian football goes beyond uh, you playing for the national team. Mm -hmm. It has to go back to the grassroots level where we need to understand that playing football beyond the money we want to make. Because today we see someone at the age of 18 wants to travel out of the country to go and play football. You see them traveling to Cambodia, mm -hmm. between all those uh, low, low, uh, low retired countries yeah. because, they want, because of the economic benefits. And do you blame them? They have to make their lives better, not well enjoy that. But the bottom problem is because we lack good football and shitters. Those who understand that if you are playing at this level, you have to move to the next level. To the tell me what homegrown player that can play for the national team, except those from the diaspora. We are in a very dear situation where I think we keep on calling God, God. We can only solve this ourselves. It is just a pain. That sometimes I don't like discussing the draft football. It pains me to the man. You're still going to talk more about the draft football because we're coming to the league. All right, as it is, we know that football is an important element. If you look at the big things we've got in the smiles that has come to the Nigerian face, it has come through football. Other sports has also contributed in athletics, in weightlifting, in boxing, but football is number one. And our ladies are no exception. The followers brought smiles to us, just like when we won the 1980 Nations Cup, the nation was a goal. When we did it in 94, the nation was a goal. Mm -hmm. In 2013, it was like we are who we are. Uh, why did let me ask you? Sports have its deliverables. Have we really gotten the desired results as a nation? Uh, we have to some extent, you know, because you know why? I mean, without football, I won't be who I am today. So if you look at some people, you know, you can name them out. They've actually gotten some benefits. But as a nation, as a nation, yes. if you ask me again, I don't think we have. But of course, it's something that needs to be worked on. You know, the current minister for sports, you know, you can see his strides, trying to put youth together, trying to come up with grassroots development, you know, back to school games and back to, you know, you know adopt uh, a, an athlete uh, program they have up and down. So, so, you know, it has to be a process. And the process, what I don't want, what I don't like, is that once the, this administration is gone, we go back to the same process again. So, so, so we need to actually look for a, a, a permanent solution that will say, okay, well, you know, the current minister has done X, I mean, I'm going to pick it up from that X, X. and then go to the next Y. So, so, so that's what we need to do. We're just hoping that, you know, the minister will leave a proper, I mean, a good legacy, policy legacy and implementation by the time he leaves office. Okay, Akim, let me ask you. If you mention Nigeria, they say giant of Africa. <laughs> if you want to look at sports generally, the South Africans are beginning to catch up with us. Almost every region is catching up with us. If you go to the East Africans, they have their specialty, long distance. Within the West, we used to have a very frightening um, record. Suddenly it has disappeared. Now the question is, do we have a strong position when it comes to sport in Africa? Because the North Africans are there. Don't take anything away from them. But do we have that position to say you can compete favorably well with the Nigerians or the Nigerians are better? Yes, I, I am convinced. And I believe so much in the potentials of the average Nigerian. Calling us giant of Africa is no fluke. We have always been giants in several aspects of women and dearbos, including sports. I tell you this, in West Africa, back in those days when the Shegon Degba made the wider college and play for the national team, Asena, a team from Benin or Togo is come to play, they are almost sweating their backs. They know they are dead. They are going to get as much as five, six, seven goals in their sure. legs. Mm -hmm. But because then we select players based on merit. Yeah. Okay? I remember my first time when I traveled with the youth team for the good tackle. I was the smallest in the team. But I was given the opportunity to, to show my talent. Mm. Today you must be connected before <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> we still remain the giant of Africa. I tell you this. But for us to maintain that strong point and for us to become fierce some once again. Like recently, South African ladies came here to wall up and guess. <laughs> I call it wall up because it was a shame. <laughs> now, do you, you blame them? Because they have the right people at the right spots at the right time. And they have their policies have <laughs> been implemented accordingly. And they are following the process. And they are backed legally too. But here, except we start doing it right, getting the right administrators, giving the opportunity to those who have played official in the game in the past to bring their past experience to be 
will continue to bear that moniker on a few level. It's, it's quite interesting and unfortunate if you ask me. But I have to give Wide Akwane the time to uh, take a leave from the studio. But before he goes, as somebody who played the game right in the country, who played it internationally, reviewing sports in Nigeria in the last 61 years, without asking them this, I wouldn't be satisfied. Why? Our league is one of the most mm -hmm. talk about league in different dimensions. But I'm not going to go into that. What I really want us to look at is we know we can develop our league to whatever standard we want to, but the league and players' development, are we really getting it right? Well, uh, let me be honest with you. Eh? I don't think the league is done very well. The league that has not matched European leagues, other countries' leagues, the last 30 years, that we're always behind. I mean, what does it take? Who do, who do we need to bring in to actually do the right thing for, 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 for Nigerian league? And without the league, what do you have? You have foreign players coming to foreign play for league. Nigeria. I mean, come on. And then, you know, how many, how many people can play for Nigeria, really, and through, through really? How, you can only have a, one, one, maybe 20 or 25 players playing for the national team. But that's why the league must be developed. National team is just one team. But the league has got 20, 30 different teams. So we need, honestly speaking, we need to find a way to develop our league. The league is not doing very well because we, we have never matched the season. Start, that's, that's just the first point I'm raising. Yeah. The season needs to be matched with yes. European countries, with, the, with, the, with, with, with world football. What are we, well, I mean, we're, we're part of world football. Yeah. Why do we always do things the other way? Akim, uh, the <laughs> chairman of LMC, um, Alam Shiodiko, did come out with a statement last week that they will start the season in consonant with what is obtainable in Europe and finish <laughs> it up. <laughs> Why don't you let me learn? Let me learn. Now, for you, You've reported so much on the league. You followed the league. You followed players. The clubs. What are their developmental programs? Because it's 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 a fused agenda. The club has what um, it takes. The LMC has what it takes. The regulating body has what it takes. But the clubs themselves, do they have developmental programs? If they do, are they carrying it out to the latter? Well, uh, it makes me laugh when we say. The LMC is coming up with this or that. Do you remember recently uh, they appointed uh, David Sinowumi as the CEO of the league? Invisible CEO. Now, mm -hmm. if we want to do anything concerning Nigerian football, that must be what I call a critical revolution. We're close. Okay, the LMC came up with under 15 uh, for tournament for clubs, where it must come with youth teams to play. That was an aspect of developmental program. Yes. But I'm really doing it when you have someone who is as much as, as old as 21 years claiming to be under 15. Hmm. When clubs do not pay salaries on time, when the welfare of players are negated and uncared about, when club officials will tell match officials, come and refer my they beg hmm. the committees, please give me this referee. Wow. Imagine. Uh, Aqua United won a league yeah. and out of the Cup Champions League and the first uh, mm -hmm. attempt, yeah. history. it is just, it, it is disheartening. It is a shame we don't have a league and we need a radical revolution. Let's, in fact, as a matter of fact, he just said it. If you are playing in league, you should be able to produce four or five players for the national team. Yeah. Regular players. I agree with you. In those days, when we, uh, we had our league. Even though we yeah, your club is back in the MPFL. Yeah, shooting stars. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I hope you it. That's another issue. Another issue. Now, you bring Tunji Banjo, Olumide uh, Banjo, and stuff on our uh, Shidoze, John Shidoze mm -hmm. from outside the country, come and compliment those who have been. But today it is the other way around. Where we now go have to beg that they should give 30% of the slot to local players. And when they do, they buy them to national. They sit on the bench. To sit if you get to sit on the bench, you are lucky. We are in a dear situation where we need a revolution. And the revolution starts with the union, the players' union, fighting for their rights. Well, um, I, I, I wanted to pick up that angle, but something inside me says that she does let it lie low. Um, why they came in here to Georgia to see how players mm -hmm. can network. So that's not an issue for today. But the players' union have a lot of responsibility to play when it comes to players' development and the club living up to expectation. I want to say a very big thank you to Wider Akone for joining us on this special edition. Thanks so very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. All right. And thank, uh, we'll be going you. on this quick break still looking at Nigeria 61. When we come back, elections were held in Abuja and the Federation. Some are actually throwing bottles, one jugu. Yes, we'll get to see what happened. And we'll take a review 
of some of the games in Europe as usual. Well, we'll come back. Akin and Joel will still be in the studio. We'll be right back.